There's a smallmouth bass in there. Hello, YouTube. SC Fishkeeping here coming to you today with a video that I am very, very excited <laughs> to be able to share with you. Today, we're diving into the pond. Not literally, I've already done that. Uh, but yeah, today I'm going to walk you through the pond and then I'm going to throw you back about a week to show you what happened, to go over the drama, and then we'll feed some fish. So let me turn this camera around and show you what I came up with here. I'm pretty happy with it. So there you guys go with the dramatic reveal. The 500 gallon indoor pool pond is done. So let me go ahead and walk through what we have going on here. This indoor pool pond comes complete with pool filter sand, rock cave structure, tall fake plants, driftwood, which to give you an idea here, this is one big piece of driftwood here that sticks up like that and then a floating log providing ample cover for that fish. This pool pond also has DIY lids that look like this. A 3100 gallon per hour pump pumps the water up, over, up, and then it drains it down through a laundry basket with polyfill, sponges, there's lava rocks in the bottom, the water fills up, it drains out and it dumps back into the pool nice, clean, and fresh. Beauty of this pool pond is the smallmouth bass do like a little colder temperature than any of my tropical fish, so I do not have to have heaters. The concrete floor actually keeps the pool a little colder, so this water right now is running about 68, 69 degrees, which is perfect for smallmouth bass, which I have two of. So there it is, guys. That is the reveal of the massive 500-gallon indoor pool pond smallmouth bass tank whatever you want to call it. I call it super exciting. I'm thrilled. I love the way it came out, but tell me what you guys think. Drop a comment. Let me know if you like the way I have the pond set up. Would you have done something a little differently? Let me know. I, I really enjoy getting your comments and your thoughts, so tell me down below what you think. In the beginning of this video, I mentioned that this pool does come with a little bit of drama. It leaked when I set it up and I had to patch it. That was no big deal. The drama actually came in the fish. If you've been following along with my channel, then you know that I went out and caught two smallmouth bass, wild smallmouth bass, with Millican fishing. Now these two fish, the goal was to put them in a space, this 150 gallon here, together, and it didn't work out. The large one, Ken, was picking on the small one, Millie, and I had to separate them. Well, the thought was, that's a bluegill, the thought was we put them in the pool, They'd have enough space, they'd be able to cohabit the space peacefully and get along. That didn't happen. Rather than me just talking about it, let me throw you back a week and I'll show you what led up to where we are tonight. Today is the day we add that fish to that pool. Stay tuned. This guy here, my massive ridiculously awesome smallmouth bass named Ken. He is in a 150 gallon right now and is anxious to get out as you can tell. The other fish is over here. My other smallmouth bass, this is of course Millie. You guys have been following along, you know the names. As you can see Millie is anxious to get out of this 40 breeder. She's in a 40 breeder because Ken was beating her up in that tank. So we're going to go ahead and put both of them in here. Hope for the best. As an added bonus and special treat, Ben of Millican Fishing is going to come over today and help me move these guys because uh, I think it's going to take a two-man job and he also has a bigger net. This isn't going to work for uh, 16, 17 inch smallmouth bass. Don't you do it. Oh, <laughs> she 
you got me that time. Got her. Alright. There you go. New figure home. <laughs> Think she likes it? Just don't let that crawdad pinch my hand. <laughs> From the inside. Ah. Don't want to get your camera wet because I have a feeling there will be some oh, action. Yeah. It probably won't be terrible if it does. Don't jump out. Nice. It's like you've done that before. Yeah. Longer. All right. Get big dude in here. Jesus. Freaking me. It's Jaws. Welcome back to the present. So, now you're caught up. Mostly. Ben of Milliken Fishing came over. He helped me get these fish out. We got them measured. We got them moved. And we put them in the pool pond. We gave Millie the smaller one a few hours in the pool by herself to kind of adjust. My thought process was she'd find her own space, get comfortable, and then when we introduced Ken, the big guy, she'd already have her spot figured out and he wouldn't mess with her. Well, that's not exactly what happened. When we first got him in there, they got really stressed, their colors get really dark, and I just assumed that that meant they were adjusting to the new space, as you see here. But I quickly realized that that's not what was going on. As Ken got more comfortable, Millie got just darker and darker, and she ended up getting pinned by Ken back here, if you can see there. Back there, behind that little plastic tub. Her colors were super dark, she wasn't eating, and I knew that something needed to be done. So we moved her. It was after I moved her back into the 150 gallon, I realized just how bad the situation was in the pool. Look. So, as you guys can see, she's got those marks on her face, her lip is torn up, her fins are all shredded, she has marks on the other side of her, but the biggest thing is that chunk out of the back of her tail. That goes all the way down into like the fleshy part of the tail, and it was like red and, and sore. So, I don't know, her tail might not actually ever heal back completely, it might have that split in it. So as you guys can see, things got really bad and I'm glad that I, you know, kept this tank, this tank open for her so that she could come back over here. I was kicking myself the whole time going back and forth thinking, is she going to be safe in there? Do I need to try and move her? Um, maybe they'll work it out sort of thing, but uh, after seeing her, once I got her in that 150 gallon, it was very clear that Ken would have killed her if I did not move her. So definitely needed, needed to happen. But enough of the drama, enough of the bad. Things are all good and exciting here in the fish room. We're going to get the best of both worlds. We're going to be able to feed from above with Ken in the pond. He'll get huge in there. Millie has this tank right now to herself. Well, with that channel catfish that hides under there. But we have room to add more fish. So let me know what you guys think I should add to either the pond or the tank if there's anything you want to see. You know, maybe I'll add some stuff. But let's get these fish fed so I can show you that they are doing absolutely amazing. And we'll end on a super exciting positive note. So let's feed him. So this is actually the first time I've ever tried to feed him on camera in this pond. So you can see him kind of tucked up under that log there. But let's see if he'll come out and uh, grab a goldfish. Well, bluegill's interested. Maybe we'll get the bluegill eating. Well, bluegill ate. Okay, so, Ken's decided to be a little camera shy tonight, but uh, we'll go ahead and drop one of these feeders in right in front of him and see if uh, he has any interest in eating for us. Alright, that was a bad throw. Oh yeah, he's hungry. Ken's just gonna hide out in that like super tiny cave there. But uh, now guys, we have a, uh, a goldfish pool pond. So there you go. Let's go see Millie eat because she is still my good eater.
Okay, so Ken decided to be a little camera shy. Millie, over there, Ugh, over there, did not. She crushed everything we threw in the tank, so she's doing fantastic. Really happy that, uh, you know, I pulled her, like I said. But uh, Ken will polish off those goldfish. He's probably eating them behind me now that I'm not standing right over him. But uh, we'll get more feedings from him in the future. I am glad we got the, him eating that one, and we got the bluegill eating one, so that's cool, too. For now, though, we'll go ahead and wrap it up. If you have not already, hit that thumbs up. Hit that subscribe button. I have another Feed them on the 5th coming up. We got uh, new fish. We got new tanks. A lot of good stuff going on. So hit that subscribe button. Thank you in advance. Thank you for watching. And until the next one, I will see you soon. Bye, fish. See you later. See you soon. Bye-bye.